Before I go into today's video, I've got to give a little plug to somebody. This is uh, Zeppler HQ, uh, and she is a Final Fantasy XIV content creator. Not only that, massive part of the Final Fantasy XIV community. Uh, she produces amazing content from guides to discussion pieces on the game itself and uh, is one of the nicest people that have had the privilege of of meeting within Final Fantasy XIV itself. Ever helpful for anyone uh, and just such a positive force. She's only 300 odd subscribers away from hitting 100k and that is such uh, a massive milestone on YouTube. I really uh, ask and call upon you guys and gals to go over to the channel. It's the top link in the description below, please subscribe, show us some love, take her over that 100,000 mark. And then, of course, tomorrow we have the release of Final Fantasy XIV's patch 5.3, which I will be streaming for probably quite a bit of the day. So let's get on with today's video, and thank you very much indeed. Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Doctor Who fans, let's just be honest, they haven't had exactly much to get excited about in recent times, probably in the last three or so years. Uh, since Jodie Whittaker took over the role, there was a curiosity to see how the first female Time Lord... Sorry, she's not actually a Time Lord, is she? Mm. Uh, ...would perform, and things started off very well in terms of numbers... Uh, but dropped absolutely drastically. And by the end of her second season, the finale brought in the lowest rating of any show in the New Who era, uh, as it dropped down to a consolidated 4.6 million. When your finale should be one of the peak episodes of the season... Now, many things have been attributed to this. First of all, Whitaker, of course, didn't exactly warm herself to the Doctor Who community, saying that it was uh, always uh, levied at the male gaze for some bizarre reason, even though it had a massive female following. Uh, on top of that, of course, we had Chris Chibnall uh, with his brand of writing, which didn't go down very well whatsoever. Very on the nose, very obvious, very blatant. And of course, very social justice -y, very lecturing, very moral. But uh, also, one of the big things which went against the show was the dynamic. And of course, when you've got Doctor Who and the companions, you need a good dynamic. There were too many companions, three of them. There was no chemistry that seemed to flow between any of them. And by season 12, Graham was just pushed to one side, whereas the other two were just absolutely useless and what's probably worse is the doctor Jodie Whittaker never established herself there hasn't been a moment within these two episodes these two series of her where we've seen the doctor where we can put our finger and say damn that is the doctor and a lot of criticism was levied at moments like that when she had uh, the potential to shine with writing, of course. It's not all Jodie Whittaker's fault. And instead did terrible things. Uh, one of the most poignant moments was when Graham uh, confessed to her uh, that he was very worried that his cancer would return. To which the doctor, instead of giving a rousing and motivating speech, which they normally would, just slunk away and said they were socially awkward and will probably think of something to say uh, or what they should have said in a few moments' time. It was not very good at all. In actual fact, many criticisms leading uh, to the BBC having to put out statements in season 12 uh, kept coming forward due to the terrible writing. Which led us, of course, to the finale and the finale rewrote the whole of the Doctor Who mythos. And a lot of fans, including myself, were absolutely disgusted about it. Uh, William Hartnell's first Doctor was disposed of. In actual fact, all the Doctors were pretty much disposed of as the new origin 
of the Doctor was revealed, and they were just some little black child that had been dumped through a portal, killed over and over again by a female Gallifreyan scientist who developed space travel, built the ship, built the t whatever. She did everything because, you know, bestest ever. Uh, that was never even mentioned the fact that she repetitively killed them. And uh, it was through the extraction of the regeneration cycle that the Time Lords were created. It was pathetic. It was terrible. There was so much that was left unresolved. And it was clear to see that the BBC did this just in an effort to get rid of 60 years of white doctors. White male Doctor Whos. Because of the new BBC uh, racist and bigoted uh, inclusion and diversity policy which they've now pushed through even in america where jodie whittaker's first run uh was met with an uplift in ratings from the previous season by the end of the second season had plummeted to the lowest of lows season e10 uh, 11 started off with 1.367 million and by the end of season 12, Amiga, 0.374. Ouch. So a little bit of good news. A little bit of good news. Filtered through yesterday. Actually hit uh, trending on the old Twitterverse. Uh, in as much as Christopher Eccleston is to return as the Doctor in a new set of audio uh, stories by Big Finish. Now, Christopher Eccleston has since uh, becoming the... <laughs> I was going to say the Ninth Doctor. He's not the Ninth Doctor anymore, thanks to Chris Chibnall. Uh, since taking on the role of the Doctor uh, has had nothing to do with this series at all. The 50th anniversary uh, was meant to feature him, Matt Smith, and David Tennant as the three Doctors. His refusal... To take part is what created the War Doctor with the late, great uh, John Hurt. Uh, which, you know, I mean, you've got a great calibre uh, of actor there. But of course, people wanted to see the trifecta. They wanted to see the trifecta of Doctors on the screen at the same time. And they felt that they were robbed of that. Even though the 50th anniversary episode was looked upon favourably, I personally uh, rather liked it, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, he also never attended conventions for a long, long time until recently where he started to go and interact with Doctor Who fans, which opened the door, people thought, to some sort of return as the Doctor. And now we do have that. So he will take on, I think it's a series of 12 full episodes which will start in May 2021. I think what most people will be interested to know is does this mean Christopher Eccleston will appear at the Doctor Who 60th anniversary and also will anyone care? And that is a big thing because there's such a sour taste left in the mouth uh, after season 12, after the rewriting of the Doctor Who lore, after the whole Tribunal Whitaker run, that it has divided the Doctor Who fan base. There are some people which are very much supportive of it, and there are people who are very much uh, against it. And the last thing that you want with your fandom is to divide it. It only creates infighting, and that benefits nobody whatsoever. Most definitely not the brand, because the brand suddenly gets uh, put alongside toxic behaviour, toxic fandom, and all these other wonderful buzz phrases that they like to use. And since the end of season 12, things have got very, very quiet on the Doctor Who front. We've heard news, of course, that they won't be able to start filming uh, the new series until a lot of this COVID business has passed. That does seem to be slightly true in as much as uh, there seem to be 
A lot of issues about where to go with the next season, with season 13. Uh, many people believe that it is going to be Chibs and Whitaker's uh, final run, which means that Chibs might just go all out uh, to push his agenda, which of course will just alienate more and more people. Uh, we've got uh, Bradley Walsh and Tosin Cole, who are both leaving uh, the roles of companion. Uh, in the Christmas special, which was already recorded uh, before this. Uh, whether or not it, that's going to appear on Christmas now is also up in the air. It might be pushed to New Year due to the ratings and the BBC putting something else, which they think will actually get some ratings on Christmas Day, which, of course, leads to the fact that Yaz and the Doctor may be the only two people left. To coin a phrase, Yikes! Many people believe, of course, that something should have been done by the BBC in terms of refreshing the whole series. This was the perfect opportunity for them to actually get rid of Chibs and Whittaker and put a reset. If there is going to be a substantial period of time before you can recall, uh, re record a new series, then bring in a new showrunner. Somebody that's actually going to uh, benefit the Doctor Who fan base. Bring in a new Doctor that people are going to gravitate towards. Me personally, I have no problem saying I think that the experiment of the female Doctor has been uh, a failure. I personally don't think uh, the Doctor Who works as a female whatsoever and it should be uh, a male. But also they need to get the audience back. They need to get the favour of the fans back. The Christopher Eccleston uh, coming back as the Ninth Doctor, even though he's not the Ninth Doctor, will do that a small way. Because already it's off trending on Twitter and it'll be a forgotten conversation in a couple of days' time. My personal thoughts was you should have taken Paul McGann. You should give Paul McGann either a six-issue miniseries or a couple of 90-minute specials uh, as the Eighth Doctor even though he's not the 8th Doctor anymore, uh, and give him a run, give him a run, and show some old Doctor who stuff with a new slant on, of course, which might get people invested and interested back in the series again, and then relaunch season 13 with a brand new showrunner and a brand new Doctor. None of that is going to happen, of course, because it's the BBC. Uh, but uh, with Christopher Eccleston returning, there is a slight bit of hope that we might get him for the 60th anniversary. That will, of course, mean that Whitaker will be in the 60th anniversary. But we don't know about Peter Capaldi, who was done absolutely dirty uh, by the BBC. And in my eyes, my personal opinion, has been the best new Who Doctor out of all of them, Peter, I absolutely adore you. Uh, so with that said, I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do get a thumbs up. And also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and YouTube for live streaming. Links are in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.